Hi, you wonderfully created. Welcome to Created I Am. Today, I'm going to be launching one of the many series ideas that I have. This one is called Recreating Shop. It's where I find an item in a shop that I really like and recreate it, or I find some cool things from a shop and use them to make something. What's really nice about recreating an item is you can take a fashion piece that you visually like and tailor it to your preference. This ASOS ruffle skirt is going to be our first item. This pink is really nice. That material is really nice. And I like it, but it's not my preference. So I'm gonna be switching out the fabric for something a bit thicker and something a bit more muted in color. And I'm going to be taking out the elastic waistband and snatching in a zipped waist. I'm also going to take the front part and drop it down a bit so it's at my knees because that's how I like to wear it. Again, that's the benefits of recreation. If any of you are going to recreate your own item, I do advise you to create a sketch. And once you've created a sketch of what your version will look like, break it down. Form a timeline. What do you need to do first? What do you think is best to do last? For the skirt, you need to have a base layer and then you need to have ruffles. We're going to tackle the base layer first. For the base layer, grab a pencil skirt and use that as your pattern piece. I've taken my material and folded it so it has four layers, two folds. I place the skirt on the fold and use that to cut out the pieces. Remember to give yourself seam allowance. I then split one of those pieces, so I had two of these for the back and one of these for the front. So that I can sew on the bottom ruffle, I need to extend the front, so I took these two pieces to attach to the sides. In case the middle part showed, I hemmed them. Then take the two pieces and place them on the main part right side together and sew them in place. What you then want to do is sew this middle part so it has a nice clean finish because you are going to be able to see it. Then I took the back and I extended it to the same length. I could have actually just pre-cut this, so this is one of the mistakes I made and you can learn from. If not, and you like me, you made the same mistake, you can just attach it on right sides together, sew them in place. I didn't hem anything before I sew them in place because you're not going to see the back really. Place the two pieces right sides together and then sew the sides. If you're making something for yourself, it's good to try it on as you go just to make sure you're on track. Measure from your feet to your waist, that's going to be your length, divide it by three, and then add three or more inches, that's going to be the width of your strips. Now, in my 21 things you need to know about sewing, or I wish I knew, I talked about not giving yourself too much seam allowance. This is one of the cases where giving yourself more is probably better than giving yourself less. So if you want to do more than three inches just to make sure those ruffles overlap, go ahead. Now the reason I cut out six of these is because I was going to sew two of them together at a time to give me three strips of 17 inches by roughly two meters. But the longer it is, the more ruffles you're going to get. So I advise you to do about three times your hip. What I did for two of the strips as well is I cleaned up the edges, the 17 inch short edges. That's because they're going to be my two bottom ruffles and you might see those seams. I didn't do that for the third strip because that was going to be my top ruffle, which is a circular ruffle. So I'm not going to see any of the rough edges. Time for the ruffles. You want your thread length to be more than triple your hip so that when you fold it, it's more than your whole hip with a bit of room. Then you're going to use this thread to ruffle up your three strips. If you want you can use the sewing machine method. I have a very basic sewing machine so it's hard to adjust the length of my stitches so I just found that this was a suitable, I'm looking for a word, alternative, there we go. <laughs> this was a simple alternative and it doesn't take that much. As I was ruffling what I did is I left about an inch at the end and the start. And after that hard work, give yourself a bit of a break, give yourself a bit of a snack. 
I then went to the lining skirt and I curved out the waist slightly. You do not want to be eating into the fabric at all. It's just to get rid of that straightness so it, it sits on your waist a little bit better. I then took the ruffle that did not have the clean edges, the ones that had the rough edges. I manipulated the ruffles so that the material was the same length or just a bit longer than my actual waist. I then re-knotted the string that I used so it stayed. As an extra precaution, I decided to sew in place those ruffles. You're going to be doing a lot of manipulation. If you keep the ruffles together now, it's going to make it easier again later. I then took the ruffle back to the skirt and made sure that my lining was right size facing up and my ruffles were right size facing up and I pinned them together. You can then sew this in place. What I decided to do was grab the waistband and just do it all in one. So the, the lining was right size facing up, the ruffles was right size facing up, but the band is right size facing down. Clip that in place and then sew it all together. So right now I'm at the sewing machine and I'm sewing that all together in place. You can see that I'm taking my time to make sure I'm grabbing all the layers whilst trying to keep to the edge as much as possible. You don't want to eat up your fabric and as I said trying it on it helps and <laughs> this is the moment I realized the ruffle was the wrong way I don't know what happened but uh, yeah I had to seam rip it <laughs> now I could have easily edited this out but I decided to keep it in just to remind us that we all make mistakes even if you're not a sewer mistakes happen in life Okay, we just have to learn to get over it, undo our mistake, redo it, and then have a happy dance when it's all coming, <laughs> when it's all coming together. So yeah, so the way I told you to do it was correct. I just don't know how I messed that up there, but we're back on track, we're back on track. Now you might notice that you can see your thread that you used to initially ruffle your material. Don't worry, later on if that's bothering you, you can seam rip it out. Onto the zip. Trim down the waistband and then let's put together the zip. You could do this last but I decided to do it here because if the zip does not work out, the other ruffles do not matter. <laughs> the zip needs to work. So as you can see, I have the right side of my skirt facing up and the right side of my zip facing down. I then take my zipper zip and make sure the zip is matched up to where I'm going to fold my waistband over. So I would say the midpoint of the waistband, but you have to make sure that it folds over properly. Then what you're going to do is take that edge and pin it or clip it to the waistband. Now at this edge, the ruffle is not sewed down to the lining skirt. If you're new to sewing, especially if you're not used to sewing zippers, I would advise you to take that lining part and the ruffle part and just do a straight stitch down that part. Keep it together so it's not moving. Then attach the zip like I'm doing now. It's just going to help you out. I decided just to sew all three pieces together because I thought I should be able to do that without making any mistakes and thankfully, thankfully, <laughs> I made it. Once you've checked that that has been done properly and you've sewed everything down, we're going to attach it to the other side. So the skirt is right sides facing up, I zip up the zip and then rotate it a bit as if it was already attached to the other side. Once I knew that that's how I wanted it to be <laughs> sewing because that's how it's meant to be sewn. I unzipped it a bit at a time and clipped it in place So the right side of the zip is with the right side of the main fabric So I think this method is okay because it helps make sure you don't have any Weird twists in your zip. Trust me. I've made I've done that Where I've sewn down the zip and I just don't know what happened But it happened and the zip is not working as a zip. So take your time during this part Pull down the zip a bit at a time, making sure you're clamping it correctly. Take it to the sewing machine, sew it down like you did before. Again, remember the top of the zip, where the zip puller is, should match the midpoint or the fold point of your waistband. Next is to finish the part just under the zip. So if we're not sewing it together, you're going to take the two ruffle parts on top. And then you're going to put them together and clip them in place. You do not want to sew the ruffle part to the lining part or else you can't sew the other ruffles. We're going to sew down that part that we've clipped but we're going to sew just an extra bit. We're going to overlap it a bit so it overlaps the zip 
and it secures it in place. Then we're going to sew down the lining skirt. I took the skirt and I turned it inside out and then did the same thing, clipping it together. This time you're going to sew it where you clipped. You don't need to sew it a bit more onto the zip. You just need to sew the part you've clipped. That's fine. So guys, we're making progress. So as, as you know, the true scientist I am, um, I just guesstimated where the <laughs> bottom ruffle should go. Um, if I was you, I'd probably do a bit more accurate measuring for this, but I was just like, uh, let's just do this. Once I got the point, I then used my ruler to mark that point all the way around. So I had a guideline whilst I was sewing the ruffle. I measured that line I just drew and used the measurement to make sure the ruffle was the right length, retying the hand sewn stitch to make sure it was the right length making sure the ruffles were distributed well and then sewing it in place now the next part is a bit different i placed it on the lining skirt in a slightly different way before the lining skirt was right size facing up and the ruffle was right size facing up this time the lining skirt is right size facing up and the ruffle is right size facing down and the ruffle is towards the waist and then I pinned it on the line that I drew before. The reason I'm doing it this way is so that when it falls back down you cannot see any of the rough edges. It's more likely that if I was to do you know, a, little, a little spin it's more likely <laughs> it's more likely that you'd see the rough edges if I didn't do it this way. So just again be patient with your placement, pin it, put it on, see if it looks correct, go back and stitch it down. Here you can see my lovely uh, measuring technique again, guesstimating where the middle ruffle should go. The better thing was to measure from my waist to the first ruffle and half it. Anywho, once I got that point, I drew a line all the way around like I did before. You just have to remember not to stitch the ruffle all the way around. Remember you have that middle part that you want to be open and ruffle free. So I made sure that I stopped at that point. And what I did, it was just overlap my ruffle a bit at the point where it was meant to stop. So we're almost done guys, it's time to finish the waistband. There's two ways to do this, you can tuck everything in and just do a stitch on top. I prefer not to see stitches if they can be unseen. So what you need to do is have right sides facing up, pull out the seam of your zipper, pull down the excess tape at the top of the zipper, tuck it away, and then fold the waistband onto all of that and pin it in place. Once you've pinned it in place, you're going to sew down this part and it's going to just seal everything up. Once you undo it and you twist it back so it's right sides facing out, you're going to see you're going to, you're going to have a little nice clean edge there. Looking good, looking good. Once you've done that to both sides of the zip and you're happy with that, you're going to take the waistband and fold it all the way around, pinning it in place. I then sewed a top stitch along this part. And guys, <laughs> it's done. <sighs> Actually, no, it's not done. What you need to do is you need to hem all your ruffles and then you're done. So yes, hem all your ruffles and then wear this lovely piece out knowing that you created it just for you. When I tried this piece on for the first time, I was so happy. It came out so well. Join me on my social medias at Created I Am on Twitter and Instagram. Check out www.createdIam.com. I post extra footage, footage that I don't post on my YouTube, a little extra, you know. So go check it out over there as well. If you'd like to know where I got some of the items from, I'm going to leave links in the descriptions below. They're not currently sponsored, but you know, Amazon, I'm here. I'm here. But if you'd like to um, grab them, they are in the description. So I hope you enjoyed that, guys. Like, share, subscribe, turn on the notification bell. And more importantly, of course, remember you are wonderfully created.